Hey everyone, Yankee here. Today I want to answer a question that came to me from a viewer, and it's kind of a funny question because we're only like 22, 23 years into the new century, but I guess if I don't answer this question now, I probably won't ever get to answer it because I don't get to see this whole century. Uh, and what the question was is, what do I think is the worst gun of the century? Because I had stated back in the 2010s what I thought the worst gun of the decade was. And have I seen anything since then that has surplanted that gun as worst gun of the century so far? Well, the gun that I said was the worst gun I had seen up till that point was the Kimber Solo. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this gun. It isn't really a gun worth being familiar with. It was an awful gun. Not only was it just a little blob of a gun, but you know, that safety that was on it was just horrible. This gun would have been a lot better if they had just made it without a safety. That thing that they stuck on the side of it was ugly. The gun itself was not a great performing gun, had a lot of growing pains. And one of the things that made this gun even worse is it had potential to be a really good gun. If they'd have worked out some of the bugs, taken that awful safety off of it, produced a little, you know, smooth, round, small gun you can stick in your pocket that was reliable, this would have been a great gun. But halfway through the opening uh, act of this gun, you know, while it was having its growing pains, Kimber just went, well, screw this, this thing ain't gonna get any better. And they just left it like it was and it faded away because it was a horrible gun. But people are asking me, have you seen anything since then that could be as bad as that Kimber Solo or worse? Well, I'm going to have to say uh, yes. I see a couple of guns that could be just as bad, if not worse. They're not worse yet. I'm going to say the Solo still is holding the position of worst gun of the century so far. But and, and keep in mind, when I say worst gun of the century, for me, to for a gun to be really bad is it has to have had some potential. There had to be a reasonable ex, uh, ex, uh, expectation of it being good. You can't just say, well, well the Kel-Tec Crapmatic is the worst gun of the century. Or, you know, the new, uh, whatever, the dog log craptastic 6000 from Company X. You know, because you don't expect those to be good. You know, they're garbage. You know they're going to be garbage. So you don't expect them to be good. For a gun to be like one of the worst guns... I think it has to have potential to be good and you have to have a reasonable expectation, like I said, that it should be good because it's from a company that knows how to make guns. With that being said, the guns I think that have come out recently that could knock the Kimber Solo off its pedestal are two guns from Smith & Wesson. The first one is the CSX. I think people are familiar with this gun. This gun, when it came out, I was like, wow, this is going to be kind of cool. And then it came out and I'm like, wow, this is awful. It's made poorly. The trigger is awful. The ergonomics are bad. It's just a bad gun all around. It was like Smith & Wesson went, set out to design a certain type of gun and then changed their mind halfway through. And then at the end just said, I'll screw it, stick whatever we got on it and send it out to the market. Just a bad design, a bad execution, everything from a gun that could have been good. And if you think I'm exaggerating, hold one of these guns. Pull the trigger on one of these guns. That trigger is the worst trigger I think I've felt on a modern gun. It's just a horrible firearm. And the next one is also from Smith & Wesson, like I said, the M&P 5.7. This is their new answer to the Ruger 57, the FN 5.7 or 5.7, just 5.7 with a dash in it. Uh, this is a gun that's just made so poorly. It's like they said, we need to make a gun, but we don't want to spend more than like 50 bucks in development. So just copy the Ruger, but like we said, don't spend any money. Put it together with the cheapest materials you can find, and don't worry about hiring a professional. Just, you know, pick someone up at Home Depot and have them design it and put it together. This gun's awful. And one of the ways you can tell they know it's awful is if you look at the pictures on the Smith & Wesson website, they bring in that gap between the slide and the frame and they color it in so you don't notice that. When you look at the one I held in my hand at SHOT Show, you can see this gun is crap. 
Plus that grip, most uncomfortable grip I've ever felt. I know they've had people out there now saying, doing reviews saying, oh, the grip is just great for big hands. I've never found a gun that fits my big hands so well. Garbage. It's an awful grip. And if you had big hands, that's a plus. That's the only way you're going to get your hands around it. But it's still going to feel like a one by two in your hands. It's going to feel awful. Uh, it's just a poorly designed gun. Now, could both of these guns get better? Yes, they could. They could refine them. They could fix the issues with them. They could make them better guns. So as of right now, they are not the worst guns of the century. The Kimber Solo still holds that record. But in the future, I could very easily see either of these guns, both from Smith & Wesson, which is why I say I have stopped recommending Smith & Wesson, mainly because their customer service has gone to shit. Uh, oops, I sweared. But their customer service has gone to poo-poo, I guess I should say. And the guns they're putting out now just aren't up to snuff. A lot of their older models are still great, of course. 686 is still a good gun. You know, everything else they make is still a good gun that they've been making for a long time, especially their revolvers. But here's the thing. If you have a problem with them, I wouldn't trust their customer service to be able to fix them. And like I said, as far as new guns coming out, they've all been crap. I don't think they put out a good thing in a long time that was in any way innovative. So when you combine all that with the fact that, you know, these two guns right here are in the running for worst guns ever, uh, it's pretty sad that Smith & Wesson has fallen so far. And that's why I don't recommend them anymore because in the future, I can very easily see one of these two guns, like I was starting to say a minute ago, become the worst gun of the century so far. Hey everyone, Yankee here. You know, in my videos, we often cover some complicated subjects. Subjects with a lot of gray area. So if you would like to further discuss anything said in my videos, please join us in one of my live chats. Live chats are held most days at 6 p.m. Pacific time, except for Monday and Wednesday when they are at 5 p.m. Pacific. There is a clickable link to the live chats in the upper right-hand corner of this video. If you disagree with anything I've said in a video, feel free to participate in Spank the Yank. You can come on the live discussion panel and let me know face-to-face -face how I was wrong.